Hello and welcome to another episode of Blue Alpine TV. In today's episode, we will talk about the EOS mainnet having again some troubles and we'll talk about a new analysis I've launched exclusively in the free Telegram channel. So if you're not part of the Telegram channel, jump into the video description or the podcast description and make sure to join. It's free and I've released a PDF yesterday. So let's jump right into this first news story. We're talking about EOS. Now EOS has launched their mainnet a couple of days ago, I think like two, two and a half weeks ago. And since then it has been kind of a bit uh, of a problem because a lot of people in order to um, participate in the EOS mainnet have to kind of stake their coins. Now, uh, until last week, uh, Thursday or, or Wednesday, as far as I know, a lot of people were still um, kind of hesitant to join in into the EOS mainnet. So there was still a couple of double digit millions uh, EOS missing in order to kind of get the network going. So uh, today or actually yesterday, there was another news story about EOS and EOS is kind of in this weird zone. It's fairly high up in terms of market capitalization, but you would expect a certain amount of more professionality or professionalism rather um, from a company that is or, or a project that is funded so well. So what happened exactly yesterday was that it uh, the whole blockchain came to a stop after uh, a bug in the mainnet software caused the network to pause unexpectedly and indefinitely. Obviously, this caused a bit of a trouble within the EOS mainnet. So a lot of uh, block producers, the BPs as they are called in the article, have kind of gathered in an emergency meeting to discuss this. So it says here, according to a post from EOS New York, published on behalf of the top 21 block producers and standby nodes, the mainnet unexpectedly paused at 9.56 UTC, after which block producers initiated a conference call to identify and discuss the issue. At 10.57 UTC, standby block producers turned off their nodes and backed up blockchain data to ensure that no network history would be lost. Now, obviously they have tweeted this as soon as they knew about it or rather a bit afterwards once it happened and says here the root cause was due to how the third transactions were handled. Fixes being released shortly by block one. And that was around uh, three to four hours later. So the software release, which has been released, by the way, so if you're part of the EOS mainnet, if you're kind of holding EOS or, or um, working in terms of uh, at the blockchain, you might have to update or upgrade your software to uh, 1.05, I think. Now, EOS is a really interesting project. A lot of people said it's the Ethereum killer, it's this, it's that. And I am just a bit hesitant to kind of believe all the hype around EOS. I really want to see it succeed because I, as a whole, like as a crypto community as a whole, I want to uh, see projects succeed. However, with issues like these, this is quite uh, uh, not annoying even, but but more um, uh, it, it, it causes it causes kind of a, a bitter aftertaste, if you will, uh, with, with this EOS thing, because it, it is fairly high up in terms of market capitalization. So they have a lot of money. They have a lot of strong people in their community, yet stuff like this happens. So there is maybe something in this project that we still don't see. Um, kind of as an investment advice, but this is not financial advice. Obviously, I'm not a financial advisor. I am personally still on the sidelines when it comes to EOS. I'm still waiting and, and kind of trying to understand where exactly it is going. With problems and troubles like these, I'm a bit hesitant in kind of investing into EOS. If you're invested into EOS, uh, obviously, first of all, stake your coins, make sure that the network is running and then participate in the community and try to help. I mean, these are maybe uh, small problems that we can still fix as a community. Now, next up, if we look at the market today, um, market still stagnant, if you will, stagnant. Um, we're looking at uh, similar numbers for the podcast listeners. We're currently on coin market cap. Now, what was interesting and kind of uh, expected, but I will explain why, 
is that Binance coin is actually uh, slowly but surely gaining a lot of percentage numbers and as well a VeChain. Now, some of the cryptos are running and other cryptos are more stagnant. Um, normally, when Bitcoin is down, a lot of people are trying to find uh, quick returns on different altcoins. But since the entire market is down, a lot of people are a bit more hesitant. Now, Binance coin is quite interesting. And this is also why I actually have released a quick analysis on Binance coin. So if you're part of the free Telegram channel, which you can find in the video description or the podcast description, you will see the quick analysis that I have posted there yesterday. I think uh, currently exchange coins are super interesting. So I have uh, the white paper from Binance open. Um, everything they said in their white paper they actually did in terms of uh, be it the buyback part the revenue part the decentralized exchange part etc etc now why are exchange tokens or exchange coins so interesting if you think about it if the um if the interest of a bitcoin goes down uh, I, I've mentioned that different altcoins are slowly but surely starting to run. Now, in any case, whether you're buying or selling Bitcoin or buying or selling altcoin, currently you still have to go through one central place, which is the exchange. Now, if you're going through an exchange that doesn't have any um, uh, uh, exchange tokens, such as let's say Bittrex, Bittrex is using mo mostly uh, USD or USDT, so Tether, but if you're going through Binance, because Binance currently has, I think, the most uh, like uh, most variety in terms of altcoins uh, that are listed, you can buy BNB, the Binance token, and you will get an, uh, quite a high uh, discount on buying and selling. So the fees are kind of discounted. Uh, there is also this kind of repurchasing plan. So every quarter, uh, the company is taking 20% of its profits and buying back Binance coins. So when they released Binance, it's an ERC20 token. When they released Binance, they released 200 million Binance tokens. Um, and the goal is to kind of buy back 100 million of these and actually finally destroy them. Um, this is on in, in kind of a, an anti-inflationary inflationary, uh, measure. So what they're trying to do is, is kind of bring a certain amount of stability and make sure that the coin is still holds a certain amount of value. So I believe uh, the, the current price increase from Binance is due to the fact that uh, a repurchase is coming soon. And obviously, this is always when the uh, price is spiking up. They are buying back their Binance, giving you either hard currency or cryptocurrency. And then from that, obviously, you can make money. Um, nonetheless, uh, like uh, let's say let's say you're not interested in Binance coin. There's also Huobi token and there's there's KuCoin shares as well. I believe these two three uh, exchange tokens are super interesting because if generally the interest in Bitcoin goes down, the interest in altcoin goes up. Either way, the volume stays good on the exchanges. And if you want to trade um, on those exchanges, you will use these tokens. So these tokens have actually a very clear business model. They have a very clear use case. So these might actually be the first real use case cryptocurrencies, if you will. It's a bit meta because you're buying a cryptocurrency in order to buy a cryptocurrency. And that's like the best case for cryptocurrencies. But it's still, um, I, I believe it's still a very good uh, investment uh, thing you could do right now. So make sure to, to kind of think about your investment thesis and also think about whether you have any uh, kind of exchange tokens in your portfolio. And with that, guys, we're already at the end of today's episode. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the podcast, join the Telegram channel. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye bye.